This is an evaluation of transfusion reactions. Whenever you do a blood product transfusion, whether it be red blood cells or platelets or plasma, there's always a risk of reaction. So you always want to monitor your patient for these transfusion reactions just to be safe. I'll be talking about many different types of reactions, their pathophysiology, their typical time course, clinical findings, lab findings, and the products that they're most commonly seen with. These are color-coded according to how severe they are. The more red, the more severe. The first on the list is acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. Pathophysiology here is incompatible red blood cells that trigger an immune reaction in the receiver of the red blood cells. This leads to the destruction of the cells. This is often an ABO blood type incompatibility. The time course is during the transfusion or within 24 hours, usually much sooner than 24 hours. Clinical findings include fever, chills, hypotension, back pain, and DIC. Back pain isn't the most common finding, but it's unique to acute hemolytic transfusion reaction. That's what that bold and underline on this chart mean, things that are unique to uh, this type of reaction. The back pain is caused by cell contents that are ruptured open and irritate the kidney. Lab findings include hemoglobinemia, hemoglobinuria, a positive direct antiglobulin test, also called a positive Coombs test, findings of DIC like prolonged PT, prolonged PTT, low fibrinogen, and thrombocytopenia. That Coombs test might actually be negative, so you can't rely on it exclusively. The Coombs test can be negative if all cells have already been hemolyzed. All types of products can cause an acute hemolytic transfusion reaction, but it's most commonly seen in red blood cells, typically with incompatible blood products, usually caused by a clerical error, again because of that ABO antigen incompatibility. The next reaction on the list is anaphylaxis or anaphylactic transfusion reaction. Here you have IgG triggering mast cell degranulation and mediator release. The time course here is during the transfusion up to within four hours of transfusion completion. Again, usually sooner than the four hours. Unique symptoms here are angioedema and wheezing. You can also see hypotension and respiratory distress. Lab findings, patients might have anti-IgA antibodies. They might also have IgA deficiency. Patients will be hypoxemic if they're wheezing and uh, respiratory distress are very severe. This can happen with red blood cells, platelets, and plasma. Next is trolley transfusion related acute lung injury. Here you have neutrophils that are activating in the lungs due to the antibodies or other factors in the donated blood products. This causes diffuse alveolar damage and you almost get an ARDS type picture. This can happen during the transfusion or within six hours of transfusion completion. Symptoms here that you'll notice in the patient are respiratory distress and hypotension, similar to uh, both of these. You can have, um, you, you can't really differentiate trolley based on your clinical findings alone. Lab findings, you'll have an abnormal chest x-ray, you'll have hypoxemia, you can have a transient leukopenia. This happens from transient sequestration of neutrophils in the pulmonary vasculature, so your white blood cell count might drop. You might also see anti-neutrophil or anti-HLA antibodies if you test for those, although these are not commonly tested. This can happen with all blood products, red blood cells, platelets, and plasma. Next, a less severe one, is transfusion-associated circulatory overload, also called TACO. The pathophysiology of TACO is fluid overload exceeding the circulatory system's capacity, leading to a cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Essentially, you've put too many fluids, too much volume into the patient, and they now have swelling in the lungs. This can happen during the transfusion or within 12 hours of transfusion completion. Patient will have respiratory distress and they'll have rails, just like in other causes of pulmonary edema. You'll also have an abnormal chest x-ray here. You'll have hypoxemia. You might see an increased BNP or this new version of BNP. This is similar to other causes of heart failure. Um, so you'll have a cardiogenic etiology of pulmonary edema with a high BNP. This can also happen with other, with, with all types of blood products, red blood cells, platelets, um, plasma products, especially in the setting of many other fluids given to cause that circulatory overload. Another severe transfusion reaction is sepsis or bacterial infection. This is pretty simple to understand how it happens. The blood products were contaminated and the bacteria gets into the recipient from receiving the blood products. This can happen up to within 72 hours of transfusion completion for that sepsis to present. Patients will have clinical findings of sepsis, fever, chills, hypotension. They can also have DIC. 
Lab findings, unique here is leukocytosis, just like in other causes of sepsis. You might notice bacteremia if you get a blood culture. And again, the same findings of DIC, prolonged PT, prolonged PTT, low fibrinogen, and low platelet count. The implicated products that cause sepsis and bacterial infection most are platelets, but this can happen in any blood products. The products might even show bacterial contamination, and you might be warned that those products had bacterial contamination after you've already given them. Another less severe one is febrile non-hemolytic transfusion reaction. This is when you have an immune response to the leukocyte antigens or cytokine release during blood storage. So if the blood is stored for a long time, the cells in the blood might have time to release cytokines and the receiving patient might actually react to those cytokines when they finally receive the blood. This patient will have a reaction during the transfusion or within four hours of transfusion completion. Clinical finding is a fever. There are no special lab findings, nothing to look for for this. So again, febrile, so they have a fever, and it's a non-hemolytic transfusion reaction, so they should have a negative Coombs test. This can happen with all blood products. Um, it's much rarer with plasma. Lastly is allergic transfusion reaction. This is a patient that has a reaction to foreign proteins leading to histamine release, just like other allergies that a patient might have. This can also happen during transfusion or within four hours of transfusion completion. Patient will get typical allergy symptoms like hives and urticaria. They might be itchy all over the place. Um, they might need Benadryl. No specific lab findings. If you do a specific investigation, you might find some things, but that's not typically done. And this can happen with all blood products. I hope this review of transfusion reactions was helpful, and thank you for listening.